Hi, I'm Belle. Well, I'm back with Tim McKibben from the Real Estate Institute of New South Wales. Nice to see you again, Tim. Good to see you too, Belle. Yes. Now, today we are talking about bylaws. 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 I know it sounds very serious. So, what are bylaws? Well, bylaws are, are, are basically the set of rules, if you will, for the okay. uh, uh, to facilitate the harmony and good administration of the strata. Right. Right. So okay. they cover things like the common property and general behavioural issues for the residents and, and importantly they're applicable to all of the residents uh, within the strata. Okay. But you've got, you got to imagine, so I suppose, without bylaws, yep. it'd be a free-for-all and be total chaos. <laughs> Don't I mean, want that. Everybody has a different viewpoint about the way things should be done. So unless we codify it and put a set of rules in there yeah. that would actually uh, govern the way we conduct ourselves, then, uh, uh, as I said, it would be a complete chaos. We need those. So are there any standard bylaws? I guess without sort of making uh, an exhaustive list of the, of the bylaws, yep. things like uh, parking restrictions and uh, and, and and obviously one of that's quite contentious is uh, the keeping of pets um, yes, yes. and rubbish removal, uh, use of common property. I think we mentioned a second ago there mm -hmm. as, a, as a way of an example, behaviour behavior of the residents, yeah, um, that's a noise, one. hanging out of washing and offensive behaviour, all those sorts of things are covered off in the, in the bylaws. Okay, so is that like uh, where you can't have washing hanging over balconies and yeah. things like that? Yeah, that's, that is quite regularly prohibited because okay. uh, people form the view that it's uh, I guess detracts from the, the general view of the property. And, it depends uh, on the washing, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> I'm guided by you in these things. Yeah. Um, and security and safety measures is, a, is another one that's uh, quite regular you'll find in, in okay. the bylaws and cover things like installation of floor coverings, air conditionings, TV antennas. So you can see it's all encompassing. Wow, it covers quite a lot. It certainly does. So can these bylaws be changed? Yeah, they certainly can. But again, as we've talked on, on previous occasions, that those sorts of things require the uh, the full the full strata to come together in a in a meeting to discuss those sort of changes right. they can't be changed by the executive committee in isolation okay so some of the common bylaws like for example if i wanted to get a cat if i was living in a unit and i wanted to get a cat do i need to get permission for that um i suppose the answer to that is a is a, a potential yes and no if you're if you're particular yes and no, yes and no. It's, the, <laughs> it's the great lawyer's answer isn't it um it's uh, potentially if uh, if if the bylaws themselves say that pets are permissible then arguably yes you can go and get your cat but i think it's always wise to go and check uh, with the executive committee Definitely. right right to them and say, look, I'm thinking about doing this. I note that I'm allowed to allowed to do that. But then you're covered off then if you've got permission to go and do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then at least you know you're safe. So the other thing is parking. I know parking can be a bit of an issue. So if you have two cars but only one designated parking spot, how does that work? Well, as I think you've answered your own question, <laughs> if you only have one car space and you have two cars, you do have yourself, a, I yeah. guess, a certain problem. Can you so, park on common property though? No, is a no. short answer. So okay. in many places there are um, visitor parking set aside, but as the name would uh, would uh, indicate, that is for visitors. So yep. you, you can't use that as your particular uh, car spot. No, so visitors won't like that. <laughs> and neither will the other residents. And that's the reason, again, I guess we look back to the bylaws for this sort of guidance about what you can and can't do. And it's, and these bylaws are set up and designed to, uh, to administer the thing in the best interest of everybody there. Yep, yep. What about giving a little facelift to your unit like do you need permission to get something like new floorboards um, again I guess back to the example you gave me in relation to the pets I, I think that in in most cases and, and you have to look I guess at your specific uh, your the bylaws of your specific strata but again I think the wisest thing you can always do when you're looking at doing any any sort of works to your property is to go to this to the strata committee to the executive committee yep. and say this is what I'm contemplating doing are there any issues uh, with what I'm proposing and then they'll give you uh, give you a response and you can work from there. Okay, so where can I find these bylaws? That's a good and it's an important question, Bill. <laughs> you can find them uh, quite regularly on the notice board. A lot of uh, a lot of okay. strata will have them available there, but if you uh, can't find them near the uh, the executive committee will most certainly have a copy of them, and you should, as a as a responsible uh, owner of a property, be uh, be aware of the uh, of the bylaws. Definitely, definitely. What happens if someone breaches a bylaw? Well, I suppose the, if somebody does breach a bylaw, and these things happen, it's inevitable. Yeah. The, the most 
most important thing that everybody should do about is talk about it because in most cases that can be resolved by simply having a, a discussion about it and drawing people's attention regularly to their obligations uh, of living within the particular strata. Unfortunately, I suppose uh, if that can't be done that way, then it has to take on a slightly more formal process right. and the owner's corporation would then uh, write to the to particular owner or resident okay. uh, and say to that person that you are in breach and they would point that out in a formal notice and then unfortunately if their conduct can't be uh, brought into, into order through that process, then the next thing the owner's corporation can do is go to the Consumer Traders and Tenancies Tribunal and seek some sort of penalty. Wow. Um, so so the best thing is not to breach a bylaw. <laughs> I think you're getting the message. <laughs> Definitely. Well, lovely to see you again, and thank you for covering off that information about bylaws. Thanks, Bill. All strata schemes are subject to a set of bylaws. Now, the bylaws help to facilitate and keep the harmony within the scheme. Without these bylaws, it would be a free for all. People could do whatever they wanted to their unit or apartment block, the common property, and each other. It would be utter chaos. Bylaws generally cover things like parking restrictions and the use of allocated areas, the keeping of pets, rubbish disposal, use of facilities and common property, the behaviour of residents including noise, hanging of washing and offensive behaviour, security and safety measures and the installation of things like floor coverings, air conditioners and TV antennas. While some bylaws may seem onerous, and seem to cramp your lifestyle, they are actually there to ensure that everyone gets the most out of strata living and that the behaviours of a few don't adversely affect everyone else. And remember, they do apply to all residents living within a strata scheme. For more information about strata schemes, you can visit the Real Estate Institute of New South Wales at reinsw.com.au or New South Wales Fair Trading at fairtrading.nsw.gov.au.